Scream was bound to get a sequel, right? Hello and welcome to the Cavern of Terror. <laughs> Scream 2 stars Nev Campbell, Courtney Cox, Laurie Metcalf, David Arquette, Jerry O'Connell, Jamie Kennedy, Lee Shriver, Timothy Oliphant, and is directed by Wes Craven. I apologize that it's been two weeks since I've done a Scream review. I was on my friend Lee from Drum Dumb's 31 Days of October Week 1. I watched a horror film from the 25th of September to the 1st of October. That's why I haven't been pumping out these Scream reviews as fast as I wanted to. If you want to see my portion of that video, head over to Drum Dumb's channel and check that out. But more importantly, we're here to talk about Scream 2, so let's get started. Billy Loomis and Stu Mocker are dead and buried. Sidney Prescott is safe off at college, but sequel. Ghostface is back and now it's time to kill on a college campus. As I said in my review for Scream, the 1996 film was a catalyst for the resurgence of the slasher genre. Scream was bound to have some competition. That competition came out the gate strong with I Know What You Did Last Summer that was released in theaters October 10th, 1997. I have a playlist on that series if you want to go over there and check out those reviews. After the release of I Know What You Did Last Summer, it was put up or shut up time for Wes Craven's new series. Scream 2 was released about a month and a half later. I'll apologize to you guys by not really talking about the meta element of Scream in my first review. But can you really blame me? Scream has become so iconic at this point that not too many people don't know the first film inside and out. But I can't talk about Scream 2 without talking about the Stab series. That's right, the franchise within a franchise. This was great. They took the meta element to the extremes and I loved every minute of it. For example, look at the first scene. Two kids going to see a film based on the first movie in the sequel to the first movie. That's genius. I want to say right off the bat that Nev Campbell once again owns the role of Sidney Prescott. Sidney, share with us, please. Oh, oh, I'll share with you. Okay, okay, okay. Damn! Needless to say, she didn't really gain any rust between part one and part two. Actually, come to think of it, everyone steps up their game in Scream 2. That includes the new main leads and the fodder. There's always fodder. It was nice to see Cotton Weary played by Elite Shriver as a full-blown character in Part 2. Not recast with a new actor, it only strengthens the first film. He also kills it with the facial expressions. Let's get on with our lives. There's been enough exposure. Why would you want any more? Why? Oh, I, I don't know, Sydney. I don't know. Uh, maybe because I fucking deserve a little exposure? <laughs> I mean, come on, Sydney. You dragged my name through the mud. Everybody thinks I'm some kind of psycho killer. And all I'm asking for is my little fucking Diane Sawyer interview to maybe get my side of the story straight. Now, I don't think I'm being uh, unreasonable in that request, Sydney. I've seen this scream just as many times as I've seen the first one, and I still catch myself thinking this. Hmm. He could be the killer. Lori Metcalf is also fantastic here. This role proved to me that she's an incredible actress, and that's unfortunate because she's only known for playing Jackie on Roseanne. She really does knock it out of the park as Demi Salt. Joel, who is Gail Weathers' new cameraman, is perfect comic relief. Like Randy, in the first film, he also plays us. But there's a difference. He knows exactly when to leave. Right from the beginning. The story is monumental. Don't you want to be a part of that? I want to report the news. I don't want to be the news. Besides, brothers don't last long in situations like this. The addition of Sarah Michelle Gellar is a nice nod to the horror genre. Plus, Rebecca Gayhart and Joshua Jackson point to the future with Urban Legend that would be released the following year in 1998. I have to say that one of my personal favorite scenes in Scream 2 is the sequel discussion scene. Are you suggesting that someone's trying to make a real-life sequel? Stab 2? Who'd want to do that? Sequels suck. Hey, no, wow. Oh, come on, man. Oh, please, please. By definition alone, they're inferior films. It's bullshit generalization. Many sequels have surpassed their original. Oh, yeah? Name one. Yeah. Aliens. Far better than the first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, there's no accounting for taste. Thank you, Ridley Scott rules. Name another. No. <laughs> Aliens is a classic, okay? Get away from her, you bitch. I believe the line is stay away from her, you bitch. It's film class, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, gotcha. whatever. You know what I mean. Another. T2. Mm. You've got a hard-on for Cameron. Mm. Big one. Yeah. But wait a second. The first Terminator is historical. Yeah. Sarah Connor, 
Yes. <laughs> Wait, come on. All right, all right, all right, okay. House two, the second story. Oh, what? The entire horror genre was destroyed by sequels. I, I got it, by the way. I got it. The Godfather, part two. This scene really hits home for me being in the position that I'm in, talking horror here on my YouTube channel and over on Facebook on Killer Flicks. I will say that the line from Randy is perfection. Sequels ruined the horror genre. It's a sequel poking fun at other sequels. I have to praise the cinematography of Peter Deming, especially in the theater scene in the second act and the ending confrontation. His use of lighting combined with Patrick Lussier's editing, who returns for the sequel, creates two massively tension-filled scenes. Forgive me guys, but I have to ask, why did Sydney need a boyfriend in Scream 2? I get it, I get the fact that she's moving on, but I think I would have preferred her being alone in the sequel. All Derek, played by Jerry O'Connell, really is, is a red herring. I think it would have been a little bit more tense and thought-provoking if he was chasing her throughout the film, making you question his motives. There is one thing that I forgot to mention in my review of the first Scream, and that is the sound. The cast in Ghostface take a solid beating in all four of these films, and the hits definitely make an impact especially if you have surround sound. Another drawback that I have with Scream 2 is that one of the killers is a little bit too easy to call out, but the other killer, I never saw it coming. Of course, just like my review of Scream, I will not reveal who the killers are until my review of Scream 3. Now that we're on killer reveals though, I'd like to know if any of you knew of the original ending to Scream 2. You know, Stu coming back and being the killer? I know, mind blown. In the end, guys, this was a really tough one, but I'm gonna have to give Scream 2 a hmm. As far as horror sequels go, Scream 2 is up there for me as one of the best, but there's no rose-colored glasses here. I stand by my belief that Sydney should have been single in Scream 2. Plus, one of the killers really is pretty predictable. All right, guys, that has been my review of Scream 2. What did you think? Let me know down in the comments down below. If you like this video and you want to see my review of Scream 3, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Also, hit that bell button, that way you get notified about my Scream 3 review and my Scream 4 review in all of my future content. I would appreciate it guys if you follow me on social media, all those accounts are in the description box down below. But most importantly, I'm Zach, this has been The Cavern of Terror. Stay metal, my friends. What's your favorite scary movie? Uh, I don't know. Three, two, one.